it's me hee <laughs> hee um welcome to my channel i don't really know what it's gonna be about yet because i um i think it'll just be random like i am but i can promise it will be entertaining if you follow me on instagram you will know that i love snowboarding and i love snowboard outfits i have a whole hashtag about it called apri lease because my name is elise and um so today's video is going to be about how to look really cool for skiing or snowboarding um, in addition to how to stay warm, how to stay comfy while looking chic and like, yeah, where you should spend money, where you should save money. There's one thing I'm good at. It's managing to look dope while staying comfortable, warm and dry, which is a bit of a skill because a lot of technical ski and snowboard wear is not particularly cute. So I'm going to share that skill with you today. We are going to start on the bottom, your base layer. Base layers are key to keeping warm. You're going to want to use a natural fiber. I love merino wool. The reason you want a natural fiber is because it wicks moisture and will keep you warm when it gets damp. So merino wool, if you get warm at one point, because sometimes you get hot when you're like riding and skiing. So if you get hot and sweat a bit, um, that dampness will just get absorbed into the fabric. And even if it is damp, it will still keep you warm. Whereas if you're wearing a synthetic fiber, as soon as it gets damp, it like just gets really cold and terrible. So a merino wool base layer, it's a bit pricey, but it'll last for years. I've been wearing the same black two-piece merino wool base layer for like 10 years now. Um, I love, I think it's Icebreaker because they um, have these little tags. Okay, so it's so old, the tag is worn off, but it used to have a coat on it and you could actually see what sheep your wool came from which is cute what sheep roaming around in New Zealand so they get little haircuts and uh then that becomes your base layer and you're warm like a New Zealand sheep so yeah I have like a black leggings and then I have a black scoop neck top um I you can get a turtleneck kind of if you like I'm just I don't really like the restrictingness when I'm trying to ride around my neck so I do scoop neck um but I do put something around my neck which I will show you momentarily um, if you are on a big budget though, and you don't want to spend the money on the merino wool, even though it does last a long time, if you get icebreaker, it's environmentally friendly, etc. Um, you can get the unique low heat tech, which like is fine. It's not quite as good, but if you're just like skiing once and it's not that cold, that will suffice. If you want to have real fun, I have this wool one piece zip up suit. I just pulled it out of the laundry. Apologies for the wrinkles. Um, which is cute. You can even like just wear it by itself for apres ski. And uh, yeah, it's fun. I like it because it's not restricting in the midsection. So like you can drink as much beer as you want in this baby. Um, it's a bit annoying when you have to pee though. That's the only kind of issue. Um, it also helps keeping snow getting up your jacket if it's really powdery and you bail and stuff. So that can also be nice. So yeah, step one is your base layer. Very important. On the topic of that, actually, I want to cover socks. Get wool socks. Forget synthetic socks. As soon as your feet sweat, it gets damp in there. Your toes will get cold. Cold feet sucks. It will ruin your day. So yeah, wool socks as well. Um, if it's really cold, you can get those little heater packets like these guys. I also have reusable ones that you just boil and then uh, you can heat them again, which is kind of cool. Um, and then on the topic of really sucking, if it gets cold, your hands. So hands are another thing you don't want to cheap out on, on your gear. Um, I would always recommend mittens, like gloves, your fingers just get cold cause they're separate. So mittens over everything, your hands end up in the snow a lot. Like, especially if you're snowboarding, getting up and down, doing up your bindings and stuff. Um, so you definitely want them to be waterproof. Um, I have these combi that's a Canadian like mitten specialty brand. These are Gore-Tex. They are really warm. You'll be golden in these. Burton also makes great mittens. So I have these leather waterproof ones. They're a bit like fashion-y of a vibe. Um, so yeah, waterproof, warm mittens. I'd say these are like between $100 and $140, I think. Um, so that's something also that you're going to want to get a good version of. Um, if you're on a really big budget, get several cheap pairs then um, as soon as your hands get wet you can put on a dry pair or whatever at lunch um, if that is what you need to do but yeah warm mitts warm feet warm base layer now we're gonna talk about snow pants 
So people always come to me asking what jacket to buy and I'm like, it really doesn't matter what jacket you have, you need good pants. Um, when it comes to jackets, you can like just wear whatever big puffy jacket you want with lots of insulation to keep warm. With pants, like you don't want them puffy, you want them quite streamlined so that you can move. So if they aren't made well, they won't be warm. Your butt is also the first part to get wet because you're sitting on the chair lifts. If you're snowboarding, you're sitting to do up your bindings. And so as soon as that gets, as soon as your butt gets wet, it sucks and you get cold, day ruined. So yeah, you want waterproof and warm pants, but also it is imperative that your pants fit well. So you want a tailored pant. You don't want a straight leg, stupid pant or a, sorry, I'm getting really aggressive right now. Pant fit is, oh, it irks me. Like a nice little flare action going. Um, Burton makes fantastic pants. Um, they have, I have these fun ones from them. They have like bandana print on them. But yeah, highly recommend Burton pants. That's like the w number one pant brand, I would say. So if you only get one pair of pants, just get plain black Burton pants. That would be another splurge. Don't cheap out on them. You will regret it. Cold Lake sucks. When it comes to jackets, it's not as important what you get, to be fair. Um, that's people's first question. They're like, what jacket should I buy? I'm like, I don't care what jacket you buy. You live in Canada. You're gonna have some kind of a winter jacket. Just wear it. Another consideration would be, um, if it is a really windy day, you're gonna want some kind of a windbreaker. Um, I personally don't think windbreakers look cool at all, so I will literally wear it under another jacket, but at least then it's cutting the wind. And if you're somewhere rainy, like Whistler, where it like rains when you're skiing, which is the worst, you will want obviously a waterproof jacket and that's where things like Gore-Tex come into play, but there aren't many places where you have to ski in the rain. So yeah, I mean, the way I look at it is, you got your good base layer, you got your good pants. On top, I will wear some kind of like a sweater, a fleece, a cute wool sweater and then you can wear literally whatever jacket you think is going to make yourself look cool so i will wear all of my puffers uh like a black puffer a white puffer i like to go long versus cropped long just like give you some cool snowboard swag and then also it keeps your bum warm when you're sitting i will even wear like bombers um i'll show you some of my jackets right now actually so i love a belted look right now. It looks so chic for skiing. Or just like your usual long winter puffer. This would look cool with like a nice tapered leg black ski pant. I'll even rock a cool bomber like this with a ski pant. Um, this one is shearling line, so it's super warm. Puffer on the back. Like how cool is this? This is not a ski jacket, but it is just as warm as a ski jacket and you actually look dope. I would even go so far as to wear like a cool bomber like this. This is like aviator style jacket. When it gets warm out, you can do like puffer vests over hoodies, but with your base layer underneath, so you're still good to go. Jackets are where you kind of have fun with it. Um, it doesn't need to be proper ski attire and you will be just fine and you'll have a good day and you'll look cuter than if you're wearing a ski jacket anyways. Um, if you do want to go the ski jacket route, there is a cool brand called Protest. Um, they're out of Europe, but you can get them on like ASOS, ASOS. I don't even know how to say it. So like this is an official ski jacket. You can see it has the snow skirt inside. It has like a spot for your lift pass in the arm and everything, but it still is like a cool print and they do all kinds of fun things. So check out Protest if you want um, ski wear that it's still pretty cute. I'm going to show you another pant style, which is very adorable, but not ideal if it's colder than like minus two, but for spring skiing or nice weather, it's lovely. Okay, so these obviously wouldn't be worn with a hoodie, but they're like, I don't know, a slow pet type style. I don't know what it is about North America, but the ski attire here is just the worst. Meanwhile, in Europe, they have like chic ski wear down hat so these are really cute but notice how tight and thin they are that basically just means 
they're not super warm so it's fine on a warm day you'll look really cute but um but if it is a colder day and you still really want to wear them you can just wear kind of like a longer coat so that when you sit down something's actually insulating your butt and it just keeps like that part of you warm so I can get away with them in pretty much any weather it just uh yeah requires a longer jacket whereas if it is warm you could wear them with like a really cute crop jacket and that just looks so chic right oh obsessed I should point out that what I say chic for skiing and snowboarding is a little bit subjective my boyfriend actually I'm just gonna show you if I was to dress in a way that Brandon would think looks cool for snowboarding, this is what I would look like. One sec. Okay, so I do like these pants. Um, they're great. They're a Burton pant. They're super warm, super waterproof, great for all conditions, but they're a little looser. So Brandon approves just more of like a snowboard vibe. Uh, why did I do this? I guess because he squats snowboarding. But then I would have to wear some kind of like a shell jacket. This one's like an anorak style, plus one of these hoods. And then you got to stick out your front hair is like this and then obviously like goggles and a helmet but like so this is what I would look like if Brandon got to dress me for the mountain this is what he gets to ride with in reality <laughs> I'll be like hey boys I'm ready to ride park with you don't you think I look chic and then they all judge me assuming I can't ride and then I kick their butts ha <laughs> I love a chic ski suit moment. I often layer a jacket over it for warmth. Um, if you do that, you can pretty much wear them in any condition. I actually have like longer puffers that I will just wear undone over top. And then no matter how cold it is, I can wear a cute ski suit and just untie it if I want to take a photo or something because those are my antics. You can also go full snowsuit vibes. This one's actually made from recycled plastic bottles. It's insulated. It's so warm. It's so cute. I love it so much. Um, it's a bit of an issue when you have to pee, but I don't know. It's not that big of a deal. You just take off the top. And now I'm going to talk about your head situation. Oh, it's really hot from changing in all that ski gear. Um, yeah, I'm naked under this right now. Okay. <laughs> so always wear a helmet. That's no question on the helmet. Um, up until last year, I always just wore helmets from Costco. It's like not important to buy a really expensive helmet. Um, I have two of the same helmet in different colors. These are Anon, Anon. I don't actually know how to pronounce it, but I think it's their cheapest helmet model too, probably around $100. Um, so yeah, buy a helmet, Costco, or this one. This one's cute, comes in lots of colors. You don't need to splurge out. I buy my helmets um, a size up. I like to wear a toque under it for whatever reason. My head just gets cold. They are not insulated enough for me. So that's something to consider. I don't know if everyone's head's that sensitive. I just have a sensitive head in general. Next up is like a topic that I feel quite passionately about because in addition to having ill-fitting pants, having dorky goggles are the next thing that will kill all the cool vibes of your outfit. One thing you can do is you can buy the goggles that are from like the same brand as your helmet and then they have like a really good fit. So wait, I'll just show you an example. What you don't want is to have a gap between the top of your helmet and your goggles. This is called like a Gorby gap or a gaper gap and there are full like internet jokes about how dumb this is. So you don't want that. You want something that's going to fit snug with your goggles. The best way to do that is just get goggles that match the helmet. These are the same brand. So in addition to not having a gap there, I need my glasses back so I can see, you're going to want goggles that are a cool shape. So this is a cool shape. I don't really know how to describe what's cool versus what's not cool. These are not cool. I don't know how to explain it, but those just look like, don't I look like a dork versus don't I look dope as fuck. Um, I mean, you can kind of get cool ones. Like these are also really cool goggles. So these are actually more expensive goggles than these ones, same brand. Um, but there's just something about the shape. You feel me? You don't have to get expensive goggles either. Like you can 
find cool looking ones that are cheap. Like these are probably some of the cheapest goggles at Sport Check, but they still look dope. Another thing to consider are your lenses though. So a lot of them come with interchangeable lenses. So these are for like, if it's really dark out, if it's really sunny, this is more of a sunglasses. So that's also important because it sucks if you just can't see well. Um, so goggles are an imperative thing to have for skiing if you're brand new to it. If you wear glasses like me, so I wear contacts, but if you are unable to wear contacts, you can get goggles that are made to fit over your glasses. They look pretty lame, but it is better than not being able to see anything. So those do exist. You can probably get prescription goggles too if you're like a baller. In headgear, for keeping your neck warm, uh, I mean, it's imperative right now to wear a mask because of COVID anyways, but um, another key way to keep warm and necessary thing is to have something around your neck so you lose a lot of heat out of your head and neck. So having that covered will really help you. So Anon, Anon, I should really figure out how to say it, makes this really cool device that it has these little clip things that go inside and they have magnets on it and it magnets to your goggles and just keeps you covered. So I will show you what that looks like on. How is that for cool? This is some seriously COVID friendly attire as well. There isn't an ounce of my skin showing. Um, so yeah, that'll keep you so warm. You just pull it down if you need to like drink water or something pop it back up, it stays. This setup here, this rig of Anon, Anon, whatever, I would say is like something that will make you look instantly really cool on the mountain. To round it up here, base layer is key. Get a natural fiber like merino wool. Uh, if you're on a budget, go for a unique low heat tech. Um, next up, your pants. Those are something you're going to want to be waterproof. So I, Burton makes great ones. I would say that should be a bit of a splurge because um, having cold, wet butt is the worst. Um, then just wear whatever winter jacket you have, anything that looks cute, um, pop another sweater under it, whatever, you should be fine. Warm hands and feet. So wool socks, waterproof mittens, that's another splurge. Don't bother splurging with a helmet, but wear a helmet. Don't bother splurging with goggles, but make sure they're a cool shape. I would, I would recommend this perfectly dope magnet situation. Cause like, you're basically a robot Terminator thing. I mean, it's just so sick. I want this in every color. So that's what I'll be getting next season. Hopefully I'll get to do more riding. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this really random video. I hope you learned something. I hope you feel more confident shopping and dressing for your next or first ski or snowboard trip. All in all, it's just about having so much fun. And yeah, check out my Instagram, the app release hashtag, Elise M. Purden, if you wanna see more snowboard stuff. And please subscribe if you enjoyed this, stick around, cause I'll have more fun videos coming your way. I also forgot to tell you, I personally feel like this is a bit try hard, but if you wanna look like a true slope style bro, you wear your goggles under your helmet like this i don't do that though because then like you can't pull them up or if you pull them up you put them on the back of your head and i mean that is a bro vibe though oh wait this is hard with one hand anyhow there is that option too